Welcome to League Legends on Fox Sports as our journey down memory lane continues in the company of the greats who helped make Rugby League what it is today. There are characters in Rugby League's history and then there's the man whose story we are about to explore. These days it could be said his entertaining persona is better known than his playing career. So we're about to be reminded of just how good this guy was. For passion, toughness and spirit, they didn't come any better. A very hard head, and inside it, an often underestimated brain with an attitude that feared nothing. Tommy Radonikus, welcome to League Legends. Yeah, thanks, Tim, and it's uh, really good to be here, mate. Now, I was talking about a hard head with an underestimated brain and, and a fearless attitude. I could have been talking about a cattle dog, couldn't I, really? Yeah, you couldn't. Uh, and they were great days, actually, you know, and uh, back in when I, when I actually coached uh, State of Origin. 97, 98, and, um, yeah, and we, we bought the cattle dog call out. And, uh, mate, yeah, it's terrific. But, you know, people talk about, you know, uh, Tom Radonis, things like that. But like you said, too, I could play footy. Now, a lot about the game has changed, Tom. It uh, certainly has, yeah. Yeah, but, and, and, again, that makes you stand out, which is good for your entertainment and all yeah. that sort of thing. But has the stuff that wins State of Origin matches and, and big rugby league matches, has that changed? Uh well, I don't think it has changed, but when you come down to state of origin, I think we've lost the plot, really, because, you know, we, um, we've we just lost that... Uh, New South Wales has just lost lost something. And I hope um, that this year that Laurie Daly does get it together, and I think with his planning so far, I think he's on the right track. But I think over those years and that 11 years, we lost the plot. But when I coached them, I just had a band of terrific fellas. All could play footy... I didn't teach them anything, but one thing I taught them, I taught them how to win, and they were fantastic. Well, on the subject of, of what you taught them, let's just take a look at something here. This is bonding camp, state of origin oh, wow. bonding camp in 1997. Let's take a look. And then I was that bit of a pilot, I used to go through the hangers upside down. That's it. Oh, that's a, oh, <laughs> You're kidding. No, right, says, no, I won't, but I wasn't there for six years, but all I did was pump the tyres up, so I never left Australia. <laughs> Let's not forget that you won that series. Now, you're talking about your time there in the RAAF, aren't you, in Wagga? Yeah, and I still, I still suck them in on that, you know, when I do a bit of guest speaking. I tell them I was in the Air Force, that I was a pilot, I went to Vietnam, I went on all those missions, and they're really going, oh, did geez, how good's this fella? And then I tell them, look, I was only, uh, I was only uh, uh, like a... A fitter, and all I did was pump up the tyres, you know. Well, so I actually filmed that, and they, I, I was there, yeah, and, and they took it hook, line, and sinker, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they certainly the players did. But now you can just see by that tape how those blokes were all having a beer. I had no curfews on. I didn't have an assistant coach, or I only had a skills coach, me and two managers. And we were fantastic. And, geez, they played great footy then, boys. Yeah, you won, and you were coaching West at the same time. Coaching West at the same time, yeah, so it was great. It was really good. Describe yourself as a player. What was your best quality? Well, mate, I think um, uh, win at any cost. Because I've said it before in the media, like if I've seen the opposition halfback walking across the, um, the car park, seriously, I'd consider running him over. Now, you're going to laugh at that, Tim Wright, but I'm telling you, I'm seriously. Mate, I hated the opposition like they'd done something wrong to my family. Now, you, you, you'll say, well, you, and that's no good for kids to do, but that's how I felt. I just felt the, the opposition were the enemy, and especially under the Roy Masters era, like we you know, he'd bring that, try to bring that through. He didn't have to teach me that because I had, that was part of my, uh, part of my uh, whole makeup. Yeah, it was in your DNA. It was in me, that's right, whatever it was, mate. Truly, one day we played East, and, and you, you can call this whatever you like, and uh, we're running out there at Lidcombe Oval, out of that little tunnel. And anyway, and the, who was uh, next to me, because we went out with the, with the eastern suburbs, was Russell Fairfax. Now, I don't know why I said this to him, Tim, but I said to him, I looked up at him and I said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> now, he, he truly, look, I'm going to use the word, he shit himself. He did, and he, he told me after the game and, and every, every time I see him, you'll never forget that day. And I think it was his first first grade game. So he was really put under a lot of pressure. Now, you can call that going way overboard, but that's the way I was. I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm not sorry. Arthur Summons recommended you to Western Suburbs. Now, 
he was doing the right thing by his old club from down in Wagga. Yep. But what did he know about you that he can't have known, Tommy, that you were going to be such a great fit for that club, surely, or did he? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's like with any player, there's a little bit of risk when you sign them up. Are they going to make the, make the grade? But I think what I showed down there in six months of playing first grade in, in Wagga, I just showed you what those, what those things I was just talking to you about. The will to win, do anything to win, you know, and uh, play, play from the start to the finish. And, and I think he, he's seen that. And remember, like Arthur, Arthur summons uh, Captain Coach the Australian side to, to England and France, and uh, I think he knew what he was, he was talking about. Tommy, you were a test captain at 23. That's right. When there was a series on the line, and, and in your Australian team, there were immortals. It was a hell of a team. How did you do that? Why did they make you test captain? Well, I look back on that, and uh, because we lost Chang at uh, Wembley with a broken thumb, and then um, we lost that game. We played the, the next uh, at Headingley, and, um, and Bob McCarthy was the vice captain, and um, he led us that day, and he scored the winning try in the corner with two minutes to go. Bob McCarthy and uh, broke his shoulder. And um, so they're looking for a captain and, and, uh, and somehow they picked me ahead of uh, like Bobby Fulton, great, great man Bobby Fulton, Bobby Fulton, Arthur Beach and Bob O'Reilly, you know, all them great players and I got the nod and um, which was fantastic and uh, we played on the ice, they, they put straw on the field and lit the straw to thaw the ice out, unbelievable, you know, and, uh, but uh, what happened was um, we won the series and then in the trip and you look back on your career and then um, we were uh, in, in France and um, I played up one night and I lost the captaincy. And, uh, but, you, you know, if you, if you do things wrong, well, you've got to be accountable. And when, when, I, when, I, when I made the mistake of playing up, I put my hand up and I said, it's me. I didn't say I, I had bipolar or, you know, or... I should get uh, counselling or whatever. I just said it was me. So it um, wasn't to be captain again. Paint a picture for us of Western Suburbs when you first joined them because you were 19. Noel Kelly was your first coach. He was from the bush. You were from the bush. What was it like? <laughs> well, well I, was, um, I was in the Air Force at the time. I'm telling you the truth this time. Uh, and I was an apprentice. <laughs> and, um, and, but when I went to West, mate, I was just a sprog kid, 19 years of age. And, um, and uh, I just came to Sydney, I got posted to Richmond and uh, I was out there in, in uh, 36 Squadron and, um, and playing for West. My first training night, I went up there, I had two reserve grade games straight into first grade. And who were we playing that day? The great St George. You know, Graham Langlands, I think Gasney played that day. All those, Ian Walsh played and, uh, and I was a bit, a bit sort of t taken back by it. And I said, I said to Kelly when he told me I was in the side, I said, Mr Kelly, I don't think I'm up to this. And he said, son, go and take a photo of yourself because I can tell you this, the way you play the game, you know, you're going to end up looking just like me at the end of your career. And he's got no teeth and that, and, uh, <laughs> and that's what happened to me. But I wasn't overawed. I just went out there and I said, whoever takes the ball up, I'll tackle. And when I get the ball, I'm going to run with it. And that's the way I approached my first game. And we just got beaten by a few points. And Noel Kelly, he was wonderful too. And, 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 and I had him for six months or that, something like that. And, uh, but he, he taught me a lot and, uh, and uh, away we went from there. In 1974, you got to play in your first final series with Wests. And it was up against Manly in a minor semi-final at the SCG. 40,000 people there and you had a great day. What, what was it like? <laughs> Tim, it's very hard to explain because... I was really G'd up to the max, you know, I was, I was really G'd up and, uh, and playing at the cricket ground in my first semi and playing against the team I loved to hate. And mate, I just, look, I just, I just loved it and, uh, and I played accordingly, like, and I just said, we'll rip into these blokes. We, we ripped into them, you know, and, uh, and I had a great game, scored two tries and, and I, one thing about it too, Tim, I love scoring tries. And, and I was one of those players too, I, I showed my emotions, you know, and, um, and when I wanted to be jubilant, I was, yeah, 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 and all that stuff. So, uh, 
it was fantastic. And beating that side meant a lot to me. In 1975, the ARL handed the Kangaroo squad, or the World Cup squad rather, over to the legendary trainer, George Daldry. Now, oh, wow. this guy was a ruthless son of a gun. He certainly was. He, now, how did you take to his style of fitness training? Because they had you, he had you for a month, didn't he? Yes, he did. Look, I, uh, I, uh, see, what people don't realise this is, mate, I was a great trainer. And see, people uh, take the perception of me, seriously, because of the way I played, in rumours that that uh, that, uh, that I'd get on the drink, punt, and play up, and look, I was far from that, and so people got that wrong thing, mate. I, I always did because I knew I had to. I did a lot of extra training because I knew I had to do that extra training to play the way I played the game. And Roy Masters always said this when he coached me that the longer the game went, the better Tom Radonikus went. And uh, so under George Daldry, look, I had no, um, look, I had no problems at all, you know, because I was a good trainer and we did all those steps up the opera house and, and George, he was a wonderful man. And, uh, and he, did write, he did write in his book, if you have read it, um, Tim, he did write in the book one day there, like I, I train, you know, I'd, I might have had a, a few beers the night before, I'd be training, I'd, be, I'd have a spew and I'd just keep running. And, uh, and that's the way I was, mate. So he was a wonderful man. Mark Harris does claim, though, that after the Mrs Macquarie's step stairs and piggybacking that, that they ran back to Centennial Park and that you and Lurch O'Neill went Excuse past them me. in a ute. Excuse me, Tim. In the back of a ute. No, I'll tell you was, Mate, we went, we went on, I was up the front row with Bozo and all them, and this ute, and I'll, I'll tell you, the ute went up there, and who should pop their heads up? Arthur, Bob O'Reilly, and then he, and he, Mark Harris, uh, he put his head up, and the three of them were in the back of that ute. So he's Mate, falsely Mark accused Harris you. Mark Harris, he didn't like the trainer either, I can tell you. In 1977, you were rooming with the other New South Wales halfpack, Steve Mortimer, and you threw his kit out the window. Why did you do that? Again, um, that's a... Well, see, that year, he, he sort of got... He got ahead of me. I had an injury. I wasn't playing well. He played for City first. I only played for City second. So he went away as the number one. I knew that my Australian job was on the line. And I knew that if I didn't get on that paddock up in Brisbane, my uh, international career was over. So, look, I, I, was, I was pretty rude to the kid and, um, and I did throw his bags out the window. Uh, and, but when I, when I replaced him 10 minutes ago on that uh, Sunday afternoon, well, mate, I, I, just, I just took that opportunity, scored the winning try and, uh, and Steve Mortimer had to wait another four years till he got an Australian and jersey or a state jersey. But can I say this? When Steve Mortimer did get the job, he did Australia proud and he also did New South Wales proud. He was a great player, Steve. And uh, but I was just ruthless. And I would And we roomed together. How silly were the managers putting us in the same room? Stupid. It's I their fault, it. really, isn't it? I loved it. Yeah. I, I really loved it. Yeah. Yes, yes. How many floors did you throw his bag? How At many? nine, ten, something like that, and they went down like missiles. You could just imagine. Mm. But what, what Tim? What this is? See, he even put this in. He wrote a book. He put it in his book, and and he'll always say this too. And and when I threw his bags out, I've turned around, and here he is with his mouth agape, right? And and he's looking like this, and and uh, and I said, I'll tell you what, too, young fella, I'll have a cup of coffee, <laughs> and 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 he and he still looked at me, and I, and I said yes, and uh, you know what he said to me? How many sugars, mate? I, he was gone, he was shattered. He's, so um so no wonder he didn't fire on the Sunday, thank God. Don Parrish was your coach at Wests in the early 1970s and then you had Keith Holman for a year and then Roy Masters turns up. Now, he knew the buttons to press to unlock something about Western suburbs. What did he know and how did he do it? Well, Roy, you can probably... Um, he was very, very good at what he'd done. See, what he made us players believe in, or not players like myself, and there's a few other ones there, who didn't need any Ging up, who were just that way. But there were certain players in there that he could get to. 
but there were certain some other players also who were a bit more intelligent, like uh, John Dorohy, like who was a bloke from Balmain, uh, the little winger fella, um, Boland, Warren Boland. Oh. And Warren Boland was asked on TV one time, he said, well, how can you, how, how can you do this or accept it? He said, well, it's either like this. You either were in the team or you're out of the team. I elected to be in the team. So what he's saying, he went along with it because he wanted to be part of something great. And what he'd done, he made us believe, right, that we were lesser. It was a class war, wasn't it? was a class war, mate, yeah. and it was. And it really, uh, Eastern Suburbs, Manly, all them silver tail clubs, and it was class warfare. And I'll tell you what in society it still is. OK, that's how little I'll throw that in too. And it's a pity you still can't have it now in rugby league. But I'll tell you what, the players believed in it. But the big thing is, Tim, is that the fans believed it. Now, again... It's, it's tribal, isn't it? It's tribal. And we, we were around the Lidcombe area, all the factories around there, Silverwater, all the factories, and the people come in droves. And, uh, and I remember there one day they had to, had to shut the gates at half past two when we were playing manly because they couldn't fit them into the ground. You left your beloved Magpies to be part of Newtown's last great era. Why did you do that? I don't know. It's, it's a funny question because after I got my life membership, I said I'd, my dad was on the stage, all the greats were on the stage. I was crying. And I said, I'll never leave Western Suburbs. And, um, but I didn't hear from them. Singo rang me and cutting a long story short, I went in and signed a contract with Singo. And actually that, that night, Roy Masters, he had to go to a meeting in the New South Wales Rugby League. He dropped me off for the meeting with Singo and the, and the boys. I signed the contract. Then Roy, um, he drove me home from the New South Wales League Club. We had a few cans on the way home and hit a telegraph pole. That's another story. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, and Roy got a bit dirty for me for signing too, you know, but so I'd done it. And, uh, and, uh, but look, I had three very good years at Newtown. Probably my last year there wasn't that, that good, but anyway, that's that's part of life. And uh, I become great mates with Singer. He he was fantastic, and I'm still great mates with him. And uh, and when we, when we uh, and it was a good club too because I went to the club to teach them how to swim. That's what Singer said to me. He said, "Tom, I want you to come to Newtown, not to play. He said, I want you to teach them how to win, and that's what I done." Well, in 1981, you and the Jets finish second. And in a way, Manly came back to haunt you in that final series. And we're just going to have a look at some vision now. Take a look at this, Tommy. First scrum win to Newtown. Rodonkis around the side of the scrum. There's a brawl erupted now. Take no bones about this one. There are three separate groups fighting. Broadhurst handling Bowden out in the lip. And they're going out at Hammer at times, like two heavyweight fighters, these two. And there's uh, a headbutt got in there from a Newtown player, and it started all over again. Tommy Rodonikus is being held by Alan Thompson out on the right. There's Thompson still holding Rodonikus, and uh, that is the most frantic opening to a rugby league match I've seen in 35 years. Well, and in the years since, there hasn't been a brawl like that either. It was truly astonishing. People still look at it on the internet and wonder how it possibly could have happened. Look, I'm going to use that word again, but I think that was good shit. You know, I really do. I, I think that's good stuff. You'll never see that again. It's finished. No. Mate, even in, in, in games now like State of Origin, and I'm saying this seriously, State of Origin is going to have an effect, is losing its impact of being a real tough, tough game. You don't see any little flare-ups now. They all pull and tug. And, and it's not the player's fault, and I really mean this, it's, it's um, state of origin matches aren't the same. But that was fantastic, and oh, you know, it, it was fantastic. But I tell you what, what happened, Tim, is that uh, I reckon that Les Boyd's gone over. He was over there, and he said, "Oh, Newtown are going to start it," and I'm saying Les Boyd's going to start a blue over here, no risk, you know. And I reckon it just it was it was just meant to happen. OK, so the grand final against Parramatta in 1981. Let's take a look at the opening moments. So applications were always open for uh, a bit no, of a scuffle. Now, you picked on Ray Price. He's as tough no, as an no, alley cat. Hang on a minute. I didn't pick on him. What happened? I remember, I had the football. Why would I go and hit him when I got the football? People say that. But now, now and I've had the football, and he's, he's hitting with, with his right hand, just putting them on me melon, and then, uh, and then it wasn't until I got up the ground that I, I st started sneaking a few under. And, uh, but he, he started the blue, and, but I didn't mind it anyway. So, uh, 
all part of the game, you know. OK, there was only a point in that grand final at half-time. Uh, let's take a look at a little bit of footage from the second half. Sort of terrier-like taking of an opportunity. Would you say that typified you as a player, just seeing that and going yeah, for it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, and, and I was a firm boy. I always played what I seen in front of me. And uh, But I always tell the story when people say, about what about the try you scored in the grand final? I say, oh, yeah, I ran 30 metres and I sidestepped around. <laughs> Um, the half back three times and, and scored this great try and only ran three yards. So, uh, no, but that's right. And, uh, uh, I knew that I, and I used the referee as a shepherd. I did that deliberately because he can't penalise me. And, and and I scored the try, yes. Yeah, so, and Peter Sterling just got around my legs in the game. But was, we, weren't, we weren't meant to win that grand final. And, uh, and one thing people always say to me, well, Tom, you've never won a grand final. But again, look, it's... I'm not going to lose any sleep over, sleep over it because that's part of the, the cards you're dealt, you know, and uh, you, 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 I accept all that stuff. In 1980, when you and Arthur Beetson ran on to Lang Park at the start of the very first State of Origin match, the two of you couldn't have known what you were starting, what you were beginning, and you had actually met Arthur long before that anyway, hadn't you? Yeah, and uh, look, I was very good mates with Arthur. I love him and... Uh, and I think our first tour was in 1971 to New Zealand, then 72, 73, 75, and uh, they were great times. But we didn't take it, New South Wales, we didn't take it real serious. I don't think we hadn't had two uh, training sessions. And I think uh, Queensland, you know, they took it very seriously. But anyway, what happened the morning before the game, I called a meeting with our players because I thought our... Uh, we, we weren't well prepared for this game and then we were just saying, oh, just another game of footy and we'll have a drink when we finish. I said, guys, better take note in, start getting a bit serious, because, mate, I, mate, I said, there's going to be a lot of people here, and they're going to be fair dinkum. So so we did sort of pull our horns in a little bit, and uh, and when we got to the, to the to the ground, mate, you couldn't fit another person in there. Mate, it was incredible. And, um, and when I, I led New South Wales out in the paddock, it was the biggest boo I've ever, it was, just, it was like thunder. But then I heard this big cheer, and we were already on the paddock, and I heard this big cheer, and I turned around, and here's the great Arthur Beeson leading Queensland onto the paddock. 34 or 35 years of age, Arthur, playing reserve grade for Parramatta, and played the best game he, he, he's ever played. Now, and, and, I, and I knew when we packed the first scrum, Arthur just went crazy, and he, and he, and he hit, and Steve Edge fell on the ground, and he kicked him. I knew then we were going to be in trouble, you know. So, um, but look, it was something special. In 1996, you went back to your magpies, didn't you? Coaching, yes. yes. Mm. Then you got the state of origin job the following yeah, year. Well, you were a busy man. Yeah, I certainly was too. And you look back, even coaching Western Suburbs, I did enjoy that. And although at, at the end of the, uh, at the end there, I got a couple of wooden spoons. Look, I can live with that too. I wasn't the best coach in the world, I mean that. But I was a good coach. And, uh, but, and, and I, I coached Country Origin, which I won. I actually beat, um, overall on the Country Origin, I, I beat Gus Girl. And then, um, and then I got the uh, job, State of Origin job in 97, 98. And, and Gus Girl gave me the, sort of a bit of a prod along there too. And that's when we first heard Cattle Dog. Yes, we certainly did. And we were down in Melbourne. And I said to the boys, in a little, had them in a little group, and I said, guys, I need a call to bring us to, 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 to arms to put something on. And, uh, and I said, what do we call it? We call it the Gallipoli. Uh, and something really stirring. And Jimmy Dimmick put his hand up and said, coach, he said, coach, yes, call it the cattle dog. And that's what we did. And, and it just grew from there, legends grow. I did cattle dog t-shirts and things like this. And, and it was a great success. And it was something different too. And, and the boys all loved it, you know. Well, Jeez, some, some weren't as keen as others, were they? No, no, Andrew Johns couldn't fight to save himself. Fair mm. dinkum. Yeah. I'd fight him. Poor old Johnson. Beaver. Poor old Beaver wasn't Be too keen no, on it. Poor old Beaver. Actually, when, when we called the cattle dogs on, he said, oh, no, not the dreaded cattle dog, you know. So, um, and, mate, geez, he was, he was another good footballer. But when you, well, t Tim, when you coach a side like that, mate, you don't have to teach them much, mate. Well, they're the best players in the world. You've done a lot of entertaining in your time but probably not too many things like this. Let's have a look.
Tom, there's probably a reason we didn't show some of the verses there. <laughs> I was going to ask Some you then, the what, what happened to the start of it, you know? No, no. With the girl in the car and the, yeah, and the, and the entrance yeah, and all yeah. that, yeah. But they're, they're all fun times, you know? And, and I think, you know, with people today too, Tim, I think people just get too serious. It's like in State of Origin. You know, why get too serious? It's just, it's just a game of footy. Oh, it's a bit different, I guess. Can I tell you one quick story about State of Origin? When, when I'm, I'm talking about people getting too serious, we had, a, we had our first uh, public uh, thing. And I think the um, the, the um, local in charge of New South Wales was in the Premier. He was having all the uh, dignitaries at the front, and we're sitting on the stage, and I didn't wear any socks, see? And, and got back to the hotel room, and uh, Jeff Carr and the, and the management got me, got me got me out and they said, listen, Tom, you're going to have to start dressing better, mate. You know, you've got to put socks on and that when you go on the stage in front of all the dignitaries. And I said, Jeff, don't worry too much because you've got to realise I didn't have any undies on either. <laughs> so, uh, you know, why get serious? So, Tom, it's been a hell of a lot of fun having you on League yeah, Legends. Yeah, Thank you for being a part Thank of it. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Five metres out from Newtown's line. This has been a Fox League production, part of the Fox Sports Network.